My permaculture journey started in 2007. I was a fitness instructor then and I wanted to be healthy -er, and I thought what better way than to grow my own vegetables and I was also a nutrition counselor so I was so excited because I thought yeah I'll grow some food and not only can I teach people you know how to eat well and how to exercise for optimal health but I can also teach them how to grow their own food. So I was researching and when I came across permaculture design it just made so much sense because the area that I had to garden was very small. And with permaculture you can start small because the smaller the space the more influence that you have and the more productive you can be in that area. And um, also you can use all the different layers of vegetation and really just pack in the diversity. So I was really just awestruck and so happy to have found this design science. And I thought, well, let me take a permaculture design course. And so by 2010, I found Quail Springs and Warren Brush was the lead teacher up there and he had a whole team of amazing teachers that taught us for a 10 day course, it's a 72 hour course. And we camped out and we were up there living off the grid, eating amazing food that they grew right there on site for 10 days. It was an amazing time. When I got back home, I'm like, oh, what do I do with all this knowledge? I was still training at the time and I, I really just wanted to jump off and do permaculture design. But I didn't feel like I had the experience or enough knowledge. I didn't feel like it was in there enough to be able to teach it. So I kept studying and then I thought, if only there was an online course that I could take or something like that. So then Jeff Lawton came up with his first virtual course. And back then he mailed us the DVDs and then he interacted with us on Facebook. Um, and some other platform. I can't remember what it was, but it was an amazing course and I was so thrilled to be getting this extra um, education. So I turned in my design. I passed that one as well, but the really great thing is, is that Bill Mollison was still alive and he was helping Jeff grade the designs, the final designs, and it was it was just Amazing. I was so happy to be that close to Bill Mollison. But the next wonderful thing that happened was Jeff said, okay, to all his class, he goes, I'm going to be coming to America. So if you can meet me wherever I'm going to be lecturing or presenting, I'll give you your certificate in person. And so it turns out that he was going to be in Oakland, California. He was landing there and he was going to be there at a church on his very first stop. So I drove up to Oakland and I got to meet him and I was the second person in the whole world to get Jeff's first online uh, PDC certificate. And the only guy that beat me was a guy down in Australia who drove out to Zaytuna Farm and met Jeff on his property and he got his certificate. So it was so nice to meet Jeff and it's, it's a memory I'll treasure for the rest of my life. But um, but after that, I, I was still like, okay, am I ready to start designing? And I guess I just, you know, have to get myself out there and see if I can, you know, do it. So I started designing, you know, I, I started sharing my permaculture with people. And I always remembered what, when I first started teaching yoga, what my very favorite yoga teacher taught me. She said, Susan, you're already a fitness instructor. You already know how to train people. She said, just share your yoga. You know how to do it. So just share what you know. And so I took that approach with permaculture too. I go, I, I know a lot. And so I'm going to share what I know. And I'm going to start helping and consulting and designing. So that's what I did in about 2014. And so I did that for a few years. And then we actually moved out to the desert to um, near Palm Springs. And I had always wanted to become a master gardener, but it was really hard to get in in Los Angeles. And so I would always miss the deadline or it was always full or I, I just couldn't get in. But in the desert, I got right in. And so I've been a UCCE 
Riverside County Master Gardener for about, well, since 2016. And I really enjoyed volunteering, teaching, and um, just helping people become better gardeners through that program. And it taught me a lot, too, about, you know, gardening and landscaping. From there, um, in 2017, I started WOOFing, and that's, uh, that stands for Worldwide Opportunities in Organic Farming. And there's a website, and it's worldwide, So, uh, but they have it in chapters. So whatever country you want to go to, you join that country's WOOFing website, and then you can see all these wonderful farms and the hosts. And you go there, and uh, you help them with their projects on their land, on their farms, whatever they're doing. And then they put you up and feed you, and they teach you things. And so that's what I started doing. And I WOOFed in California, of course, and um, Arizona, Colorado, where else, Kansas, yep, I think those are all the places, but multiple places in each of those states. And so I learned a lot, and I was really trying to explore different climates and different techniques, um, but also trying to figure out what kind of place do I want to express my permaculture in. Well, I, I'm i still not sure, <laughs> but I looked around and then um, by 2018 I thought, well, let me learn even more about plants because plants are the pathway to permaculture and the pathway to sustainability. So I started uh, designing for Armstrong Garden Centers in, in Los Angeles and they actually put me through a course that... Um, ultimately got me my certification as a California certified nursery professional. And boy, did that open me up to even more plant knowledge and, you know, in the broad landscape of how to use plants, how to do fire breaks, how to do wind breaks, how to, you know, design a little cottage garden to an Italian formal garden to an English, I mean, it was just so many different types of design. And Armstrong is such a great company, and I'm, I'm really grateful to them for, I mean, just including me on their team. So um, from there, in 2020, I decided, okay, I'm going to go out woofing again in the summer. I had planned this, and I'm going to really look for my land, probably central to northern California. But then COVID hit. So everything was shut down when I wanted to go and look for my land and, and go wolfing. And most wolf sites uh, hosts, they were not even taking wolfers. But I did find a couple. And um, I was up in Mendocino County, which I love. And I wanted to find some land there. But then I learned from, there was no inventory. And what I learned from one of the realtors that I uh, finally stopped and talked to, she said, Everybody from the Bay Area has moved up here, bought up all the land because they're trying to get away from the virus, trying to be remote and safe. And it is like the inventory is gone and what is left is like the prices have skyrocketed. So I had to put my land search on hold. And I guess everything happens for a reason because, um, you know, I got back to Southern California and... I thought, you know, if I really picture myself out on 20 acres with not a lot of people around, how am I going to make that happen? How am I going to get that all developed? Um, am I going to be able to afford importing everything, all the supplies and the manpower that I need? Or would it be better to check out what David Holmgren has to say and also Rosemary Morrow, which are two you know, really amazing permaculture teachers, and they're all about retrofitting the suburbs and the cities. So I really started diving into what they have to say. And I'm thinking now that the suburbs are the way to go. So I'm doing everything I can right now to completely retrofit my own home and property to sink carbon and to be as sustainable as possible. But I've also branched out into community permaculture. I've started a permaculture club where I live on nextdoor.com. 
and I'm getting a lot of members and a lot of people who are interested in being more sustainable, but also people who are interested in being more productive in their landscape. And what I'm trying to do is get people to produce something and then buy, sell, trade, barter from each other in the very local environment. So I'm having some, starting to have some success with that. So I'm going to keep working on that. But also um, what I'm doing also is starting a nonprofit for women. Um, veterans, seniors, and TAY, which stands for Transition Aged Youth. So all women, all, all women who, you know, may have had some trouble or you know just may need a leg up and what what I want to do is acquire properties houses and with yards in the suburbs and completely retrofit that uh, to be sustainable for the the women who live there and their families if they have children or spouses that's fine but really um, concentrate on the women in those populations so it's all about permaculture for me it doesn't matter if I'm on a big landscape, if I'm woofing, if I'm designing, or if I'm giving a lecture for master gardeners, teaching people how to be um, more sustainable in their own gardens. I really am just all about trying to figure out how to take my next best step so that I can sink more carbon and live more lightly on the planet because I really want to see this planet be a beautiful, oasis not just for us but also for future generations you know if if you have kids you got to take this really seriously because we we can't have any more deforestation you know we can't have any more desertification and we, we have to really watch how we consume from companies that are basically strip mining the planet for profit and um, there's not going to be much habitat left for anybody, including humans, if we don't change our ways now. And so jump on the bandwagon. Let me know what I can do to help you with your permaculture. Join a permaculture club and um, take your next best steps.